Okay, so this is a review that I'm really actually very excited about. Right here, you have a FOPO triple portable monitor setup. Now, basically what this is, is this is a, how should I say, an extension for your Windows-based computer. It does work with some Macs. Unfortunately, this one supposedly doesn't work with the M1 or the M2 chip, according to their compatibility uh, specifications. I'm sure there are others out there, but as you can see, they specifically say that we do not support the M1 or the M2 laptops. Those are the brand new Macs. Now, if you have an older Mac that is an Intel Mac, you should have no problem at all, as long as you have enough ports to run it. So as you can see, these screens are 1080p. They're basically the exact same screen. It's just that the sides are reversed, which you're going to see in a second. They support HDMI. As you can see, a triple monitor, 13.3 inches. And um, what I've noticed is uh, when it comes to shopping in Asia, like I noticed this when I was in Dubai and in Maldives, when you go to some of the um, electronic stores, what they do is they make sure that you know who you can call for service or who you can email for service. So they include that information right here. They're saying if you have warranty issues, you can contact them via email and hopefully they'd be able to straighten it out. Now, what do they say? They say the power supply requirement for the FOPO monitors, make sure your power supply is five volts or two amps, which basically means that you're gonna be using a USB-A or USB-C port that supports um, at least that five volt spec right there. Uh, power delivery over USB-C will work just fine. Uh, USB 3.0 will work just fine. Most laptops now have USB 3.0. Um, it says, if you don't meet the power supply requirements, your monitor screens may not be able to work. Um, now they say laptop size must be within length 12.1 to 16.8, height 8.6 inches, thickness 0 0.32 inches. Now, in order to show you this product, I have two laptops here that I'm going to use. The first one is this Asus Tough uh, gaming laptop. Just so you will know that the specs, this right now is being sold in Micro Center, and you can easily find these for about $7.99 um, for the 15 inch, and maybe even $8.99 for the um, 17 inch. Usually, one thing I've noticed is the 17 inch actually usually goes on sale, um, and usually is slightly cheaper in comparison to the 15 inch. And I'm guessing it's because the 15 inch is the more popular model. The 15 inch is obviously, um, you know, smaller, it's uh, more portable and whatnot. This has the Risen 7, so this is an 8-core processor. Um, it's relatively up-to-date. This laptop also has the uh, GeForce 3050 Ti, um, so it should have no trouble at all running the triple monitor setup. So this is a newer laptop that I have, because to tell you the God's honest truth, because I'm uh, saving money, to buy my uh, Cadillac Lyric electric car. And I'm always, um, you know, trying to save money, especially we're in a recession right now. I haven't bought much computer hardware lately. And I'm really thankful that they sent me this because I actually wanted one of these. And the reason why is because when you travel, you may want to be able to do other things with your laptop instead of just watch one screen. So I'm really, really thankful that they sent me this because um, chances are, if I were to travel, I'd be taking this laptop right here. Now, you've probably seen this one before in one of my older videos. This is my older Alienware. Uh, this is a 15-inch uh, screen, even though this thing is gigantic. It's like it's built like a battleship, and it's a gigantic. It has a huge flat panel for your hands. Um, as you can see, this one has a slightly smaller panel. It's also a slightly small laptop. This one is much, much heavier than this laptop is. This this laptop right here is considerably lighter. This is an older Alienware. This is a Core i7 with um, a GeForce 1060, I believe. But one of the reasons why I like it is because it, um, you know, calls attention to itself when it has these beautiful bezels. And uh, I've tried to keep it nice and clean and neat, but usually when I travel, this is the one I take. And this laptop runs Crisis very well. It runs Crisis. I've played 
uh, Crisis 2 on it, which is actually easier to run. But it ran Crisis, Crisis 2, and it ran um, Crisis Warhead. And I played through all three games on this laptop. So if this laptop can run it, um, despite being older and having a less powerful CPU, having a less powerful GPU, then I know this laptop can run it. Because the uh, Crisis was a, a two-core uh, game. It, it was a game that really demanded two cores rather than... It didn't need eight cores. It just needed two cores running very fast. But um, it's always a good benchmark, and that's why people still use it. So these are the two laptops that we're going to use to test it. Now, I want you to notice this laptop right here has a thin bezel, and it's uh, it's much smaller in size. This laptop right here, however, has a much thicker bezel. Because as you can see, there's much wider. It's, it's twice as wide as the uh, first one. And um, I, I have to say, this is still my favorite laptop. Unfortunately... The equipment is old, but this is still my favorite laptop. I love it for the looks because it, it just calls attention to itself. It's got all these beautiful, you know, it, it, it changes colors and this, that, and other. And um, it, uh, it just looks great, especially if you travel, you're sitting in the airport, and you've got a laptop like this. It looks great, you know. It has a good, still, the screen looks vivid. The screen looks sharp. It's not the newer technology with 144 hertz. Um, some people, some tech reviewers would probably say that this laptop right here has a, um, a sharper display, but, um, frankly, um, I like this one. I definitely like this one more because, um, it, it, it's definitely, um, it's a great looking laptop and, um, you know, it has the colorful keys and everything, but it just doesn't, it just doesn't light up like this one. So why am I saying all this? It's like, if I'm going overseas and I want to have a really nice laptop to show, you know, when I go someplace or I'm setting up in my hotel room or whatever, it's like, you know, I, I want to be able to say, yeah, look at this. You know, I have a very nice setup in my um, in my hotel room. So um, let's see. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use both of these laptops. And this one is saying there's an update available. So let's see, download and install. And um, yeah. So I'm going to use both of these laptops with this, um, with this, um, um, with the, uh, mo with the monitor and I'm going to show you how the triple portable monitor setup works with both of these computers. First of all, let me just show you, it comes with its own case. It comes with its own carrying case. This feels like recycled some type of recycled material. It feels like it. It's most likely a microfiber. It's designed specifically to protect the front and the back of the glass. It is designed specifically to fit just the um, uh, just the monitors inside of it. But um, for the most part, if you are traveling and you have a laptop bag, um, if you carry a decent sized laptop bag, you'll be able to fit your laptop and this triple screen. In, you'll be able to put the triple screen in this case and you'll be able to put both of these in the laptop bag. Now, because of the design of the triple screen, you definitely want to keep this bag. This is very, very soft and cushy and it provides a lot of protection. It also, the inside of it feels kind of like a mouse fur suede. It's as soft as mouse fur, as you can see. And um, this is designed to protect the screen. But the problem is you still do not want to apply pressure to these screens because um, too much pressure could definitely shatter or break the glass, you know, since it's still a liquid crystal display. Now, it would have been nicer if there was a way to get a hard case, but the thing about it is if you have a hard case to protect your laptop, then you'll be able to protect the triple screen too, so it's not really that big of a deal. But it's nice. It's um, definitely stylish. Fopo is most likely a brand you've never actually heard of, which is part of the reason why they want us to demonstrate these for our viewers on our channels so that they can raise awareness. And I've demonstrated a number of products like Kotec and Oppo and this, that, and other. So this is a nice product, and uh, they just want to raise awareness that it exists. So um, yeah, this is a this was the only other accessory that comes in the box with it, and this is obviously going to be needed. Based once you see it, you'll understand why. All right, so let's get the model S16 out. So basically, as you can see, 
video and power. It specifically tells you USB-C, Thunderbolt 3, 4, um, HDMI, DisplayPort, Mini, DisplayPort, Mini, DVI, VGA. Now, they show you that these screens are mirrored. So there is a, a volume up, volume down button. As you can see, uh, type USB-C on both sides, mini HDMI on both sides, type C power delivery, video and power on one side and power only on the other. So the left screen is for power or the right screen is for power. So either one is fine. They also say there's two type C's on each side. And as you can see, there's video only mini HDMI. So basically, they give you a nice, simple um, setup. So they tell you the laptop size, then they say each screen is a separate part and doesn't contain a battery. Firstly, find the Type-C power port, uh, not Type-C video port, but they want the Type-C power port. And use Type-C to type A cable to connect it with the power adapter included to provide enough power, which is 10 watts, 5 volts, uh, slash 2 amps or above for the screen. Secondly, when the screen is powered, check the ports on your laptop. For full function type C port or Thunderbolt 3 4 for HDMI, you can use the right cable included to directly connect to the video port of the monitor, type C video and power, or mini HDMI. For other ports like DisplayPort, Mini, DisplayPort, or VGA, you need an extra adapter docking station to connect. Now, this laptop right here has two USB ports, and this one does too. It's just that it has one here and it has one in the back. So let's take a look at the monitor setup. Okay, so this is what they show. Now, as you can see, there's different ways to connect this thing. Because see, the real problem is it's getting its power from your laptop. So that means that this thing is going to run your laptop battery down. Now, if you're setting up a triple screen setup, chances are you're not moving around too much. This is like a desktop replacement for wherever you happen to be. So if you're an expat and you need triple monitors, but you don't have enough space, that's what this is really for. So as you can see, in one of these setups, there's a power adapter that allows you to plug it directly into a wall. There's a second power adapter that allows you to plug it directly into a wall. Then they have the mini HDMIs, uh, mini HDMI cables, and then you have mini HDMI to HDMI cable, right? So that's one way to set it up. Then right here you see one full function USB-C and HDMI port connection. You can plug it directly to the wall using the power adapter, and you can still you can only you can either plug both sides or you can plug one side. Um, so this is these are three different options, as you can see. The first option right here gets the power completely from the computer. If you have two full-function USB-C Thunderbolt 3 fourth port connections, you got USB to USB-C, USB to USB-C. If the screen shows power-saving mode flashing and doesn't light up, mostly it's because it doesn't have enough power. All right, so those are the connection instructions, and this is the device. So they put a lot of protection in. They, you know, I, I guess it's Apple that has forced everybody to rethink how they package products. And now everybody tries to package their products like everything's a luxury item. So this is one of the screens. Read before protecting, uh, removing protective film. This is the center. Now on the back, you have the other monitor, as you can see. So on the back, this is... The other monitor, so if we take off the protective films, this is the other monitor right here. Um, as you can see, all this folds out. There is a kickstand here because you got to understand, this thing is so heavy that uh, they need this kickstand in order to make it so that it doesn't tip your computer over, right? And then this is the very back of the unit. So basically, when it folds outwards, one side of the glass is facing outwards. This is the reason why you need that uh, the case in order to help protect the glass because one side is always facing out. When you fold this out, fold it out, and then you fold out the other screen. The other screen does protect itself because it's facing inwards. And then you get this big, wide, big and wide. These things, Each one of these screens is 13.3 inches. So it gets really big, really wide. Now, this portion right here 
can be ratcheted outwards. And it also has uh, bezel adapters right here that they seem like they're on a very strong nylon or uh, some type of material that pulls back. So it doesn't look like that'll wear out anytime soon. Both of my bezels should work just fine with that. And then this portion right here can extend sideways um, very easily when you pull on it. And that allows you to fit it on either a large bezel or a smaller bezel. So that's basically that. So let's uh, look at the connections that are included. This is, it's a nice, it's a nice piece of equipment. I always wanted one of these. I just found them to be very pricey and I never was going to spend the money. So what do they, couldn't they give you, uh, these are the uh, mini HDMI video cables. Um, right here you have the uh, USB-C to USB-A cable power only. Then right here you have USB-C to USB-C cable video and power. They give you one of these power adapters to plug into the wall. Now, since my computer's plugged into the wall already, I'm just going to plug everything up to the computer, and I'm just going to try to run it right off of the USB um, ports. So what we'll do is I'll do that, and we'll see how that looks and how it works. Okay, everybody is probably going to have a different experience trying to connect this thing. It's actually not terribly hard. Now, I did it with a bare minimum uh, number of cables and it's running off of the single power supply of my laptop right now. I'd also like to point out that there's a, the kickstand has a joint that allows it to adapt to the length that it needs to be in order to adjust it to the, uh, to the angle that you want it. So as it stands, this is what it looks like right here. So right there, I can take a move back just a little bit, take a photo of it. And that's what it looks like. It's a very attractive offering. But let me just say this. Um, I'm going to walk you through the cables that I had to use. Because basically, I, I disconnected all the cables. They gave you two HDMI to micro HDMIs. They, gave you, they basically gave you two of each cable. The only thing they didn't give you two of was this uh, power supply. They only give you one of these. But these power supplies are those cheap Amazon power supplies that you get for like five volts that you usually like if you have um apple uh power delivery for your iphone or something you probably would be able to use those because this is like five volts this is not that powerful so um uh, i have i know i have one of these uh that came with an amazon um fire stick this thing says it's five volts yeah if you have a white apple block and if you have the small old uh square the little one that will work as just as well as this. And a lot of us have more than one of those. So you could use that instead of this. It's a shame they only gave you one of these, but you really didn't need it because I, as you could see, I didn't even use it to connect. But um, let me just walk you through the connections. So my uh, laptop has one USB-C power port, right? It only has one USB-C. It has a HDMI right there. And then it has this USB, which I'm using for the mouse. So basically the first connection that I made USB-C right here for USB-C power for this monitor. So that's giving me data and that's giving me video. For the other side, what I had to do, as you can see, this is the micro HDMI cable. I ran that from this side, HDMI, and I ran it around the back. And as you can see, I plugged it here. What I also had to do was I used this USB cable in order to plug it in for data because I, I think... This thing required it. Like if I disconnect it and I try to run it around to the other side, I might be able to do it here. Because as you can see, this is a purple cable. These purple cables basically tell you that this is power delivery. So it might work. It should work. Uh, yep, there you go. Okay, that's that. So as you can see, we got three screens. Um, so let's see. If we go in here, we can uh, manipulate the screen. So I have my mouse. But right now, the mouse doesn't know which screen is which. So I have to identify each screen, right? So it says, okay, this is three. All right, identify. This is one, two. So it looks like the way that this is connected, it's saying that this screen and this screen are the same. 
And that's because I get I plug this into this port over here. But if I want to expand it, I think I have to change the way it's plugged in. So I could experiment with that a little bit. But as you can see, each one is working. So let's say I if I wanted to expand on one screen right here. So let's say I go to YouTube. Let's go to YouTube. I'll just watch one of my videos so this way I don't get a copyright infringement. But uh, so far, so good. It looks pretty good. Um, let me just uh, turn on one of my videos. This is Inside Edition. Yeah, I'm going to point the camera down because I don't want to get a copyright infringement because these people at YouTube are pain in the ass about this copyright infringement. Um, okay, here. Here's a video I did, and here's a commercial. Um, so I could jack up the volume just a little bit. I was doing this without volume, so this way there won't be any copyright problems. But as you can see, the uh, computer is recognizing. Oh, in fact, I have to I have to change the positioning. But as you can see, it is working. So let's just take a look at the quality of these monitors, because I think it's actually easy to see. I am uh, doubling the video from here to here. Now, this screen is 100. This is the main screen. This is 144 hertz. These little screens are, are 13.3 inches, and let's see how many, um, what's their refresh rate? Um, these little screens are, does it say? I think it does, because I, I know I read something where it said what these things are capable of. Um, or then again, I, I think uh, Windows will actually tell me, but... Let's just take a look at the color reproduction. One thing that you may be able to see, and we're just going to compare this one to this one, but one thing that you may be able to see, in fact, let me see where, when my hand comes back. If you look at my hand, it's easier to see. I've got cables running everywhere. It's like cable spaghetti. I'm going to see if the, okay, let's look at my fingers. Even through my iPhone camera, it's easy for you to see that right here, my finger, because this is my finger, so that's, you know, real life. You can see right here that my finger has a certain shade of darkness, right? But at the same time, you could see that there's more color put into my finger right here. So what that means is that either the brightness is turned up too much or the contrast may be turned up too much. But basically, um, if you're using this for text... You probably won't have a problem at all. You know, like, for example, um, you know, I've bought members in my family more than one monitor so that they could use uh, one monitor to type something. And they could use the other monitor to watch uh, TV or watch a show on YouTube or something. Right. So if you're using this for text, you probably won't care. Now, as far as the um, movement goes, this obviously this is 144. So this has a pretty high refresh rate. I'd have to look into Windows to see what the refresh rate is there. But for the most part, it doesn't seem like there's a pro. I don't see any issues. What I do see is that the color reproduction, I see that the colors are a little deeper on this side. And you can, you can almost basically see that even through my iPhone. You can easily see that. So it looks good. I'll just say it like that. It, the, it looks great. Um... But if you're playing, if you, and by the way, I do not like playing video games across screens that have uh, individual bezels. I don't like doing that. Um, this would be perfect for somebody who's doing stock trades and they're, um, you know, they're using their computer in order to um, do day trading or whatnot. This will be perfect for that kind of person. This will be perfect for a content creator. Like if you're using your main computer screen to uh, 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 finagle videos or whatnot, you could put the video files on this screen right here, and you could do the videos, uh, the uh, editing on this screen right here. And this screen right here is just a secondary screen. Now, depending upon how you plug this thing in, you'll be able to separate this screen so it'll recognize one, two, and three, which is what something that I'm going to do right now. I'm going to try to figure that out. But see, the problem that I'm going to have, my Alienware doesn't have as many connections 
as this computer does, or at least the connections on the Alienware may be older. So I may have to try to figure out another way to plug um, both of these screens data in. What I may have to do is I may have to add this. And this is an older review that I did. This was a Kotec gift. And this gift, um, this was a, a port replicator. And it was pretty much designed with the style of a Mac in mind. And as you can see, it has um, Ethernet, TransFlash, SD, micro SD. Um, it has both. It has USB 3.0, USB 3.0, USB 3.0, 3.0. Now, as far as I know, the USB 3.0 spec has power delivery. But what I've noticed is this USB 3.0 right here is USB 3.0. But this one right here is USB-C power delivery. So we have two USB-C ports on this. Uh, so I may have to try to use this in order to separate the screen so that this way I can get one, two, and three. So I'm going to try doing that right now and see what I can do. And I'm going to continue the video from that point on. Now, how I'm going to plug this into my Alienware, I don't know. That might be a little bit difficult, but I'm going to give it a try. We'll see what happens. Okay, I was able to get it done, and I was able to get it done by identifying this screen as 2, 1, and 3. I'm going to show you that I've got a tremendous amount of cable spaghetti. And I was able to get this accomplished. I what? Here's the problem, though. This laptop right here only has one USB-C power delivery port, right? So what I ended up having to do in order to make it recognize both sides is I had to run... Now, you may have recognized this. This is my uh, Kotec port replicator. What I did was I plugged the Kotec port replicator into the side of the computer for USB-C. Then I connected this HDMI port from here to here. Now, I, I may try again to see if I can do it without this part right here. Maybe I can. But what I noticed is the computer under HDMI recognized the fact that these two monitors were there faster than it did if I left it alone and I just used USB. I tried plugging in a USB-C uh, cable here to the right side monitor. That didn't work. Now, as you can see, the computer now recognizes I can slide my mouse right here. I can cross it over under the extended desktop, and I can cross it over to here. So right now, the computer is recognizing all three monitors. Uh, text size is about the same. I've extended the display. Now, here's the thing. If you have one of the newer gaming laptops and you have USB-C power delivery ports on both sides of the computer, which is one of the things that Apple did with the Intel Macs, See, the problem is this this uh, setup right here does not support M1, M2. Um, so if you have an M1 or M2 chip in your Mac, it's not going to support that. If you have an Intel system, Intel systems have a built-in integrated graphics. So if you have an older Mac, um, this should be able to uh, work with it no problem. Um, so basically, as you can see... Um, I'm having no trouble. Rep I, I have no trouble. If I wanted, I could move this monitor to the left or I could keep this monitor in the center. I could move this monitor to the right. So basically extended desktop works fine. Now, I also should point out that I was having an issue with the power delivery because this thing doesn't deliver enough power. See, right now, this Kotec port replicator, the beauty about this and you could almost see that they kind of designed this like one of those uh, Macs, they, if you wanted to smoke gray Mac. The beautiful thing about this port replicator is it has multiple USB ports, trans flash cards, SD cards. It even has VGA. And on top of that, it has, um, um, it has uh, another USB port right there. So if you want to plug accessories in, I could plug everything, including my mouse. I could plug all of this stuff in through the Kotec. Okay, so that's cool. That's, I mean, yeah, it looks like cable spaghetti, but the thing about it is if you run it off your desk, you probably wouldn't even notice it. So I can plug my mouse in, and my mouse is working just fine. So everything works just fine right now, right? But the problem that I did have is because this computer only has one USB-C power delivery, what I ended up doing was I had to use 
my 100 watt GAN charger. By the way, you don't need to use a 100 watt GAN charger. You can use something less powerful. So these two devices that I have here, I got both, these were both free samples from CodeTech, right? So these are what is delivering my power to each one of these monitors. This is a 100 watt GAN charger. I use it to charge my iPhone 14 Pro Max at night. It's a fast charger. If you have one of these Galaxy phones or whatever that supports fast charging, this is the type of charger that you want. But right now, gallium nitride chargers are everywhere. So it's very easy to get one, right? But I had to use this and this port replicator. And the reason why was because I wasn't getting enough power just from the computer alone. So even though the computer alone had it had two USB-C ports, it would have been able to run both of these monitors. I ended up not being able to do that simply because I only have one USB-C port. Now, if you, uh, I, I know what I'm saying. It's, t it's a tongue twister and you might not be able to follow. This is what I'm going to say very simple. As far as reviewing this device, what they should have done was they should have made it so that power delivery is integrated from one monitor all the way across to the other. They should have made that part of the device itself. There should be a wire in there or a cable system inside the expansion that allows power to go from one place to the other. Now, if they didn't think that they'd be able to get enough power from the laptop itself, then what they should have done was they should have, again, crossed power from one monitor to the other and then allowed you to plug um, a single plug into your outlet that would run this entire device. The reason why obviously they didn't do that is because they felt that you'd be able to get portable power off of your laptop alone. Now, that's not to say that they couldn't have had a pass through that allows you to get power using the laptop alone. The problem is you wouldn't want to do that because it will kill your battery twice as fast because obviously you've got two big monitors running. So, you know, that's just what it is. Um, it looks good. I mean, I'm glad, first of all, I, okay, so I got one video right here on YouTube running. I'm going to put that right there. So as you can see, I, I crossed that video over. Um, I can put another video. It says three years building off the grid, open link in new tab. Okay, so I'll open this link in this new tab. I'll put that right here in the middle. So as you can see, I got two videos running simultaneously. And I can get a third video right here. Look at this. Open link in new tab. And I got a third video running right there. So there you go. I am now running three monitors. I'm running three different YouTube videos. You really, really wouldn't want to do that because obviously how can you pay attention? What the fuck is this? Shrink it. What, what is this? Yeah, it's like the guy's taking a shit on a flower or something. Oh, his bladder is, this guy's all messed up. His bladder, he's pissing on himself in the bed and everything. Yeah, that's nasty. So anyway, his prostate's all messed up. Yeah, that's not, a, believe me, prostate problems in these old people, it is not a good thing. Trust me. You you can't even let them get in your car because they'll piss up your seats. But anyway, uh, let's get away from that. So bottom line, um, as you can see, three separate videos running just fine and obviously because of the audio you wouldn't be able to do this because you can't pay attention to three different videos simultaneously what this is mostly for is somebody let's say if you're a vlogger a blogger or if you're a writer or if you're doing spreadsheets or if you're doing um oh this is a perfect way to do stocks so if you want to set up your stocks here you're doing stock watch you got stocks here you got day trading here. You got stocks here. You can do all three. No problem, right? So that, that's what it is. Now, once again, as far as reviewing the device, the main thing that I have a problem with is that power delivery is not passed through. If power delivery had been passed through, this would be absolutely perfect. As it stands, as long as you're willing to deal with cable spaghetti, as you can see, as long as you're willing to deal with the cable spaghetti, it's not a bad thing. So once again, what will I use this for? I will definitely be using this when I go overseas. Because usually when I go overseas, again, I take the Alienware. And usually what I do is um, I set up my Alienware and I just leave it set up in my hotel room. I've never had a problem in Asia. They don't steal your electronics. And most, if you go to a decent hotel, 
ain't nobody going to steal a, a computer. First of all, it's an older computer. So for the most part, nobody's going to steal an older model computer. And even if they did, it would be really hard for them to get away with it because goddamn things bigger than they are. So, you know, um, this is a really great product. And I'm sure that just by looking at this, you can come up with things that you would do with it that I'd never think of. Like some of you do music production and some of you do art and all that. Um, artists on the go or graphic designers or uh, video game designers or whatever you are. I have no idea who you are. I have no idea what you plan on doing with something like this. But I'm certain that many of you have probably thought to yourself, man, I really wish I had a triple screen setup for my computer. I, again, because this computer is old, I'm using more cables than I need to be using. If this computer had more than one USB port, like if it had replicated ports on both sides for USB power delivery, this computer would be perfect. The newest generation of these computers only comes with USB-C because they've tried to make them thinner. Now, if you get these gaming laptops, yeah, you'll get USB-C on both sides. You'll get USB-A on both sides. And this way you won't have a problem like I did. But for the most part, the only thing I needed to do was take care of the power delivery. And that this piece right here is solely taking care of the power delivery. I really wish it had a pass-through, but it doesn't. So I'm not going to hold it against them because, you know, I'm very, very thankful that I have uh, supporters on my channel who send me products like this um, in order to review and to get the word out that these things exist. But um, that's my main criticism. Power should have been passed through. As far as the kickstand, you've probably noticed I've pushed on the kickstand a couple of times. This thing is heavy, obviously, because you're dealing with all this unsprung weight to the left and right. So because you've got all that unsprung weight, this thing wants to fall flat. But that kickstand is the only thing stopping it from doing that. Now, some of you may come up with a do-it-yourself solution in order to make it work out better for you. That, that'll work fine, you know. You may have a do-it-yourself solution that I can't even think of. In fact, this computer is actually kind of light. And because it's kind of light, the monitor is a little bit light. So that means that this is able to pull on it more than it would be able to do my Alienware. I'm going to test the Alienware in a second. Um, but um, this is what it is. I was able to set this entire thing up using USB-C and HDMI. As long as you deal with your power delivery by having... Like, I have a couple of solutions. Like, I have this USB uh, 3 power supply. This would work just as well as the Kotec that I'm using. In fact, the Kotec is overkill because that's a 100-watt GAN charger. Now, Amazon sells chargers just like this that have two USB-C ports. That would be more than enough. Some of you have all of those uh, old USB-C chargers for your Galaxy phones. So that would be more than enough. The point is, all you need to be able to do is plug both of these monitors in to USB-C, and then you'll have no trouble with power at all. And because the entire setup is plugged in, I could play video games on this, and I can watch YouTube, and I could do something else over there. It's, it's whatever you think. Whatever you would normally do with an expanded desktop, that's what you can do with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this apart right now, and I'm simply going to take these two plugs, plug them into my Alienware. I'm going to put the tough gaming laptop aside, and I'm going to plug this into my Alienware and see how it fits. Now, the Alienware is a lot bigger, so I'm going to take this off the table. But as you can see, it works. It works fine. This is all the stuff that I didn't use. So as you can see, I didn't use the extra USB, the USB to USB-C cable. I didn't use that one. I didn't use this one. This is the second cable. It's the same. I also, I took this out of a different uh, bag. This is this didn't come with it. This is a, a large USB-C to USB-C cable. So I didn't use those. I didn't use this stuff. So again, as long as you can take care of your power delivery through USB-C, you're fine. And um, having a port replicator actually is great because this way you can plug your peripherals into the port replicator. So now I'm going to just disconnect these three. I'm going to disconnect these two cables. I'm going to plug it into my Alienware and we'll see how it works on the Alienware.
Now, first of all, you got to understand the Alienware computer. This thing is so freaking big. Again, this thing is built like a battleship. Now, both of the plugs plug in in the back. So everything that I have plugged in in the back. So I have, I have two. This is a real gaming laptop right here. As you can see, there's two USB power delivery. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. There's one USB power delivery. The other one is a port expansion. And then you have the Ethernet back there. So this damn thing is so big until the kickstand won't even reach all the way. So if you try to pull this, as you can see, this thing, the kickstand, does not reach all the way down. That's number one. So the kickstand becomes obsolete for here. However, because the back of this computer is so heavy, this is a very heavy laptop. Because this thing is so heavy, this thing is easily able to support the weight, no problem. So here you go, boom, look at that. Look at that. I had to send the other computer into BIOS update because it was a uh, Windows 10 update and restart. So, ooh, my goodness, god damn, this is cool. See, this is the reason why I love this computer so much. Now, I'm a little disappointed that it hides the lighting, the RGB, but, um, Oh yeah, this looks good. This looks really good. Now, all of these monitors, as you can see, have been set to uh, duplicate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to display settings. Right now we have to see how this is set up. So what we wanna do is we don't wanna duplicate. We wanna extend desktop on one and two. So we're gonna say keep changes. Then we're gonna say identify. So this is one, that's two, that's three. So if they're saying this is one and that's three, then what we want to do is we want to say, we want to move this one here. Let me see, if we if we move this one here, this is one. I'm going to say, wait, who's who? Okay, that's three over there. So the third one is the last one. Put two right here. Identify, this is one. That's two. Okay, so far I'm gonna put this one back over here. So it's one, two, three. Okay, wow, god damn, this thing's big. Apply, once I apply it, yeah, there we go. The mouse slides right here. Got the F-22 fighter ready to shoot down them Chinese balloons. Then we got the mouse slide right here into the middle. Close that, and then we got the mouse slide here to the side. Now. Each one of these, now you see, I have to say, this this computer, you see how big this, this computer is gigantic compared to that computer right there. So what it is, is this computer is so heavy that it's easily able to support that extra weight. Easily. It doesn't need the kickstand. In fact, these bezel uh, hooks, they are on there because that you, as you can see, it's not a perfect flat. It's actually a little bit of triangular shape, but it supports it just fine. It doesn't seem like there's a problem there. One thing I noticed, this monitor seems to be a little bit brighter than this monitor, but see each monitor has its own adjustments on the side. So you can adjust the monitor's brightness, contrast, black levels. And on this side, you can do the exact same thing. The buttons are shifted, but yeah, you can, this one says brightness 70 and this one says brightness, okay, 70. So maybe it's just my eyes, but one thing I do notice is this monitor, and you can even see it with my iPhone, you can see this monitor is brighter than those, either that or it's more vivid. These monitors on the sides, the attachment is actually based on newer technology than this monitor because this is an older monitor. Now, as far as... Um, like as far as uh, reproduction of color, you know, it looks it looks damn good. I mean, I, I gotta say, this is a freaking cool. This is an absolutely cool product right here. This is a really cool product. And again, while you're looking at it, maybe you're thinking of using it in ways that I wouldn't. Like I, I wouldn't think of using it in certain ways. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna go to my channel. I'm gonna run. Uh, some different videos. So let's see what's, what's on my subscriptions. Let's see. Smelly girl gets Frank Castled. Okay. We don't like smelly girls. Not too smelly. So I'm going to throw this over here. Look at that. Ooh, look at that. Okay. Um, this is a little bit too big. Oh, there it is. It fit. Yeah, it snapped in. It snapped in nicely. Okay. So this one snapped in. 
Now he's got a top chat right there, so I'm gonna create another and create something else. I'll create this one. Old guy goes viral for doing something. Okay, so we're gonna spread this one right over here. We'll spread this one right over here. Okay, so look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That looks good. That's a good looking monitor. So you got these little flappy monitors right there. Yeah. So again, I won't be using this at home, but when I do travel abroad, I definitely will bring this with me. You know, since the passport bros have to have a, a nice computer system center. So I could turn on Steam. I could throw on some video games right here with Steam. I could play. What, what we got? What we got tonight? We got Mega Man. Well, we got Mega Man Legacy here. Uh oh, what we got? Let's let's throw on some Mega Man. I beat all of those Mega Man games. I, I played all of them from one through ten. That was some damn good gaming right there. That was damn good gaming. So you can watch YouTube videos or look up cheat codes or whatever it is. Right here. And what is this? Is it playing? Okay, right here. Boom. Okay, so I got my Mega Man Legacy collection right there. So you got you can play games right here. Oh, I can play. Let, let's go quit. Okay, yeah. So I got Mega Man right here. What we got? We got Ninja Turtles. You can play some Ninja Turtles. Watch YouTube. Do some stocks investment over here. I can watch. I can watch uh, this government uh, run us deeper into debt over here. I can watch something else over here. I got Ninja Turtles playing right here. I mean, this, this thing is cool. Now, it's a little bit expensive, but I'm pretty sure that um, anybody who would want something like this already knows that they're going to spend a little bit of money. It's not terribly expensive, but um, it's not, I mean, it's not terribly expensive for what you're getting because the thing about it is nobody wants to carry more than one laptop. Some people might set up iPads and bring iPads with them or something. Nobody really wants to do all that. But again, I'm going to point out again, the last thing I'm going to say in um, criticism, it would have been a lot better if power was um, sent from one side directly through the device to the other. There's no need this day and age to have to have two power supplies. This should have power, this should have power, and this should be shared. Furthermore, as far as I could see, um, I think they could have come up with a better way to split the screens. The problem, I think, was they had to separate the data delivery for each screen, and they had to do that simply because each one of these screens is taking its own HDMI. And HDMI, unless you have an HDMI splitter, as far as I know, you wouldn't have been able to, because HDMI delivers audio and video. So that would have probably caused a problem, and I guess they knew that. But what you have to understand is these are actually the exact same screen. What they did was they flipped the side. So as you can see on this side, you see the controls one way right here. And if you look at the other side, you can see that they actually flipped it. They actually just flipped it. So power delivery is down here. Data is up here. Data and power up here. Power is down here. And on the other side, they flipped it upside down. So, I mean, hey, that you know, that's that's how they produced it. It, that it is what it is, you know? So, um, I mean, it looks, I mean, I, I say it looks great. I say it looks great. The beautiful thing about it is that you have the option to have stuff like this. Obviously, this is not something you're going to want to set up in public. This is something that you want to set up for your home office. Because right now, that's where we are. We're in my home office. And um, this is nice if you're on vacation. Because with all this cable spaghetti, you know, you got cables getting in the way. You don't want this thing getting knocked over. This is something like when I was in my Philippine condo or when I was in Thailand, I could have set this up in the corner, probably laid it against the wall and never had to worry about it falling, never had to worry about it, nobody, you know, running into it or anything. The thing is, it's fabulous. It's really, really nice. Now, there's a couple of technical things that I might say about it in the uh, URL section, including uh, information about how, if you're interested, you can buy one. But um, you tell me what you think. I mean, I always wanted this. See, here's a, I'll say this. What I really, really wanted was I was hoping that they would have actually built a laptop that had these two flap monitors 
built into the laptop. That I haven't ever seen anybody build a monitor um, for a laptop like that. So basically, it was inevitable that somebody would say, you know what, let's make add-ons and we'll add those on. But this thing looks like it was designed to be an add-on for an Intel-based Mac. My thing is, as you can see, because of the size of this thing, it would probably look a little bit awkward on a Mac. You really need a full-size gaming desktop to really carry the weight of this thing. So if you have a 17-inch monitor um, and it has thin bezels, or if you have a 15-inch gaming laptop like this, it will work perfectly. And I got to say, this looks awesome. The cable spaghetti is my only problem. I shouldn't have to have the port replicator and I shouldn't have to have a second power delivery. But other than that, the power delivery is awesome. So I'm going to take a photo right there of it. Uh, let me try to adjust the color because my uh, iPhone is, is focusing on the brightest thing. So I'm going to just take a picture right there. Okay, and that's that. So um, you guys tell me what you think. I'm going to give you all the information for it. And um, they'll, you know, they, they give you plenty of uh, parts. They give you plenty of documentation. The thing about it is how you set this up is going to vary based on how old your laptop is. Because as you can see, once again, I have a USB-C port here and I have a USB-C port on the back. The problem is newer laptops do USB 3.0 and power delivery. So again, if you have an Intel-based Mac, you should have no problem at all. If you have an older gaming laptop like this one is, you know, it might have its pluses, it might have its minuses. I like the fact that this thing can carry the weight of this entire the setup. I like that. This is really, I'm going to have a hard time parting with this laptop, even though it has a GTX 1060 despite the fact that that one has a 3050 Ti. Um, the next time I buy a laptop, I hope I can get one this size, but they're not making laptops this big anymore. They're making them so much smaller. So that means that if I get a smaller one, I won't be able to carry the weight of this monitor setup unless I use the kickstand. But what I can say is that um, I really like this model and I really wish they'd have kept building this model just like this. This thing is tough. I can take this through airport security, and they always want to look at it because they think it's a bomb. No problem. I take it out. They swab it. No problem. But what I love about this laptop is the looks. And when you attach a device like this, it looks even cooler, you know? So uh, that's basically all I could. I could rant about this thing for a long time. I love what it can do. Again, you could probably think of things that you would do with this that I can't even imagine. Like you might do whatever, like you're a vlogger, a blogger, a writer, a song. You could do this for DJing. Yes, if you're a DJ, you could have multiple screens. You're up there scratching records and shit. Over here, you mixing music here. You, you're making copyright infringement over here. Um, I, I can't even think of all the stuff you could do with this damn thing. Um, I mean, you could do a lot. I mean, like you could, you could watch only fans over here and you could watch X hamster over here and you could watch, uh, porn tube, right, porn hub right here. I mean, I can't even think of all the stuff that you would do with this thing, but, uh, I, I can't even think of all the stuff I'm going to do with it because when it comes to content creation, you know, I usually create all my content on my iPhone, just like I'm doing right now, as you can see. But um, if I had to um, finalize videos, download videos from Frostwire or something like that, um, you know, I mean, this, the, the sky's the limit. I, I, it, it's three monitors and it fits in your laptop bag. I mean, what more could I say? So if you have any very specific questions, please feel free to ask me. Once again, thank you to the company for giving me this beautiful device. I love it. You know, and that's just what it is. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask me and I'll be glad to get right back to you. So once everything is put away and tucked back in, the monitor basically folds away and slides into its soft case, just like this. So um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a great looking feeling device. 
it will last until new technology is developed and um, can't go wrong with something like this. And that's it. And it just fits right in there into the case. As you can see, this case and the uh, monitor setup are roughly the same size as the Alienware computer. But this thing, again, this thing is a freaking beast. So, you know, this is a, this is a big computer. This is a really big computer. But um, everything works perfectly. So once again, these are two other objects I did reviews on. This is the Kotec 100 watt GAN charger. And this is the Kotec um, port replicator. So just in case Kotec's watching, I still appreciate the fact that they gave me these because these are the gifts that keep on giving. So there is a, there it is. That's my air review. I'm really, really happy. I think this is a great product, and I'm pretty sure that uh, if you're interested in something like this, you should definitely check it out.